How is everybody? Give me a thumbs up if you're all right. Woot! And it's Saturday morning. Good for you. See, already honor scholars. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll even on the weekend. Hi, I'm Linda Kuhn. I'm Dean of the Honors College and Professor of Medieval History at the University of Arkansas. We are so excited to see you all on camera or even to see your names. So thanks for joining us in our 2021 convocation. I'm sorry that it couldn't be face-to-face -face and in person, but I do think this was wise considering the current circumstances. I will say that the Honors College is fully back on board and our seminars are face-to-face -face and we're grappling with all kinds of amazing questions here in the Honors College. So what I'm gonna do is to give you a little overview um, today, and then I'm going to turn it over to a series of our Honors College colleagues. And of course, my main question I want to answer is why go to the University of Arkansas Honors College? Well, because we're great. This is objective and public. We are awesome, and we want you. And I'm going to explain and try to convince you why all of that is. Now, I've only been given eight minutes. That's hard for me. I'm a historian. You may have noticed my colleagues in your high schools tend to go on and on. That's who we are. But I am going to keep my remarks focused. And what I'm going to focus in on is story. I always call them bedtime stories. <laughs> I have three amazing bedtime stories for you of recent graduates from the Honors College and what they're doing now. Because, of course, you are all ambitious. You would not be here on Saturday morning if you weren't the kind of student that we want. So you're the top players. Congratulations, you're rock stars in your high schools. And so I always find it's interesting to tell you about those who have gone before. And then also what the Honors College can do for you. And I'd like to start my conversation today with a recent graduate. I actually find this part of my my discussion with you a little sad because these are students that are no longer with us and we miss them. But I always say we're like stalkers, so we, we stay in touch even after you graduate. Savannah Seapol from Little Rock, Arkansas, biology major with minors in the medical humanities, super hip y'all thinking about med school, medical humanities, hoot, hoot, great career path. She had minors in medical humanities, philosophy, and psychology, <laughs> but she majored in biology. She was super interdisciplinary. She still is. She was an outstanding student here who did undergraduate research in Costa Rica. We have money to send you abroad, yes, to take classes, to take languages, but also to do research. And that means we treat you like graduate students not just undergraduates. Savannah did research in Costa Rica exploring the life of yellow olive flycatcher, a species of tropical bird, and why that bird uses black fibers of a fungus to weave its nets. She took all kinds of interesting classes, including my favorite, Animal Minds, the philosophy of animals. I know, she's, she was super intellectually adventurous. She was an attractive candidate for med medical schools across the country because she didn't just apply with the standard portfolio that pre-med gives you. She enriched that portfolio through the funding we have in the Honors College. You might think it's a little bit odd that somebody that liked birds went to med school to work on humans. They love that. After reading a thousand applications that all look the same, that all have the sort of standard package in the STEM, somebody comes along that clearly is pre-med and can do all the STEM, but is willing to shake things up and do things a little bit differently. So where is she now? Well, I miss her, I do, I, this is the hard part, <laughs> I miss Savannah, but she is actually in her first semester at Washington University in St. Louis's medical school on a full tuition scholarship. That is super hard to get. So she came here with great funding and she's going to med school without debt. <laughs> yeah, and that's what engaging with the Honors College does for you. And also sad for me because I said goodbye this summer <laughs> 
to Elijah Conley from Melbourne, Arkansas, who was a political science major with a minor in journalism, someone that I worked with very closely in the Honors College. He was a member of the Honors College PATH program, which funded in part his work here. He was super involved. Everybody knew Elijah Conley from the chancellor on down. Super involved at campus on, from day one, holding leader, leadership positions in the associate student government, for those of you who are politicos, and also on the student alumni board. Elijah was able to parlay his academic and leadership experience into a super exclusive internship with the Congressional Black Caucus. Those are super hard to get. And yes, he met Kamala Harris schmoozing in the nation's capital. This, all of these experiences combined to propel Elijah from Melbourne, Arkansas into law school at Georgetown University. And if you know law schools, you know that's probably the top in the country. And he did get a very nice financial package. Now I'm not going to take full credit for Elijah Conley or Savannah Supal. Like you all, they showed up ambitious and ready to create a unique path. But our resources and our staff certainly were attentive and helped them along that way. That's a good reason to go to the University of Arkansas Honors College. And also tragic for me, for those of you interested in engineering, is Nicholas Broadbent, my favorite farm kid, mechanical engineering. He came to the university like a lot of mechanical engineers already able to build and fix cars, right? Am I wrong? In fact, a special car, car a 1969 Hugger Orange Camaro that he would drive to the Otters College. And of course it would break down on I-49 headed into Fayetteville, Arkansas. But he knew how to fix it. He designed a special little fan and he used a series of rubber bands to keep it going. But what else did he do? He did mechanical engineering and German, which is a very popular track for our super ambitious engineering students. He had not only an internship in Germany as part of this dual degree program that's built into it, by the way, any parents listening, this is super prestigious stuff. He stayed and parlayed that experience into an internship with Mercedes-Benz in Germany. I mean, that's as hard as getting into Georgetown law. All of these things led for him to get a full ride to Stanford University, where he's now, I love this, in a research lab, the top research lab in the world for driverless cars with a specialty in race cars. How could I make that up? I don't know, I'm kind of done now. I mean, who's in a lab that makes driverless race cars? It's so awesome. Nicholas is awesome because he's finishing his PhD. Those race cars have speeds of over 150 miles an hour for those of you in engineering. But he is the most down to earth, amazing kid from Arkansas who got $330,000 to go to Stanford University. Now I could keep you here all day because I got stories like this and I've got those cooking. I mean, our current student body president, Coleman Warren is an engineer, but he's also a Truman scholar. He's also a super impressive politician. And I'm thinking he's gonna become governor of Arkansas or so I hope. All right, I know I see that Dr. Pittman's getting nervous. She's talking too long. So these are just a few examples of our honors college rock stars. We have a whole bunch of them in multiple disciplines, but I will say, and this is advice that I'm ending with, I don't, wherever you go, you guys are super marketable. Just remember that you're marketable. You can go to many schools. My major advice is go where you get the best deal and where you really feel it's a great fit. And what I'm about to say will help you anywhere. Those three students, yes, they came in brilliant, brilliant ACTs, brilliant high school, blah, 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 like all of you. But what made them different while they were here is that they carved a unique path for themselves. That is the key to success, no matter where you go. You could go to any university in this country and be that successful. The key is having the resources and also the staff, such as we have in the Honors College, to sort of propel you on your way.
Now, I know you haven't even gone to the university, but I'm thinking about your graduate school or even your entry into industry. That's my job, right? My job and that of my futures hub, which is an amazing assortment of advisors and mentors who work on your next professional self. And I'm not kidding. They're thinking about that for you right now. They live and breathe your success and they, they can't get enough of it. It's a real high for us. So engage, wherever you go, engage with the staff. Take full advantage of the research and don't be afraid to pivot. Some of you may have picked majors, but you really don't know. Good, I always say the best scholars are those who have no clue what they're gonna do. How can you know yet? Unless you're not open to experience, right? You gotta be open, that's the other key to being successful at the university. Well, thanks for your time. And I'm now gonna turn it over to Michelle King, the assistant director of our PATH program in the Honors College, who is finishing her PhD in higher ed and is a recruitment rock star and future academic administrator. Extraordinary. Take it away, Michelle. All right. Thank you so much, Dean Kuhn, and good morning, everybody. Before I get started with anything, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. All right. And can everybody see my screen okay? Yes? Okay. All right. Well, um, again, thank you all so, um, thank you so much Dean Kuhn for that warm welcome. Um, like Dean Kuhn said, I'm Michelle King, I work here in the Honors College, and today I'm going to be talking with you all more about why honors. So Dean Kuhn gave us a lot of great insight on wonderful experiences that our honors students have had here in our program, and so I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about that. Before we get started and jump into the presentation, uh, just a quick couple of things. Um, if you all have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, my colleague, Dr. Noah Pittman, is also online with us today, so he can answer questions for you in the chat. Also, if you haven't checked already, if you can make sure that you are muted um, during the presentation, that would be fantastic. And then the other thing I'll add about questions is I will leave time at the end to answer questions as well. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get started. So just a little bit about the Honors College. We were created in 2002 with a generous donation from the Walton Family Foundation. That year, the University of Arkansas received a $300 million gift, and a large portion of that went to the creation of the Honors College. That is still one of the largest gifts given to an American public university to date. Upon receiving that donation, we were given two main goals for the Honors College. One was to make sure that students have a fulfilling experience, both inside and outside of the classroom. And the other main goal was to prepare students for those next steps in life. So whether some of you are thinking of going to graduate school, going into professional school, or going into the full-time workforce, we want to help prepare you all for those next steps. In addition, with this donation that we were given, uh, we will talk a lot about how this donation supports our students um, during their time here at the University of Arkansas. I'm not sure how many of you all are familiar with an honors college or the dynamic of an honors college or an honors program. Um, some of you may be familiar, some of you may not be familiar with it. I will say that depending on what university or colleges you're looking at, the requirements for an honors college will vary in terms of things like curriculum and expectations inside and outside of the classroom. But regardless of the university that you decide to attend, all honors colleges aim to give students the best of both worlds. So that means that students will get to take advantage of everything that's offered in an honors college while still being able to take advantage of everything that's offered at the larger university. Here at the University of Arkansas, uh, students again will get to tap into a lot of the things that we offer and we'll talk about that in, some, in the upcoming slides. 
Um, but most importantly, they'll get to take advantage of what we offer at our large tier one research university. So students will get to explore the different majors that we offer in which we nearly have 100 majors. Students will get to possibly take part in any of the 400 plus registered student organizations that we have here on campus. Students will get access to world-class research and they'll get to do all of that while being in a dynamic college town. I will say that as a large public university, it is gonna be a sizable environment here at the University of Arkansas. We have a little over 29,000 students that are currently enrolled. However, um, even though we know that can be a bit overwhelming in our Honors College, we do have a little under 4,000 students that are currently enrolled. So we are able to provide students with that smaller environment. And we do put an emphasis on smaller class sizes in our Honors College, as well as an opportunity for students to interact with faculty members a lot more. So in the upcoming slides, we're really going to emphasize what it actually means to be an honors college student here at the University of Arkansas. One of the opportunities that students will get to take advantage of in terms of being in the honors college is taking honors courses. And one of the main questions I typically get asked when talking about honors courses is, what makes an honors course different from a regular course here on campus? And students typically assume that honors is going to be more challenging in terms of the workload. So they assume that they're going to have an extra paper of some sort, a longer paper, or maybe an extra project. And that's essentially what makes an honors course different. And that's not necessarily the case for our honors college here at the University of Arkansas. Honors courses are intended to provide students with smaller class sizes, an opportunity to interact with faculty members more in the classroom setting. They're intended to allow students to be able to collaborate with their peers in the classroom, have discussions in that classroom space. And they're also designed to help students develop their critical thinking skills, as well as apply the things that they're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom space. So those are just some really important things about an honors course. Honors courses are going to be rigorous, um, so I'm not going to downplay the amount of work that will have to go into that, but they will be rewarding at the end of the day. So it may be a little bit different than the expectations that you all are used to. One of the other things that I'll emphasize about being in honors is that students will have their honors courses embedded in their degree plan. So you're not going to have to take additional honors courses. There will be a variety, variety of honors courses you can tap into. So there will be honors courses offered for your majors. There will be honors courses that are offered in general education course requirements in which all students will have to complete those. And students will have an opportunity to choose the honors courses that they want to take. We offer anywhere between 160 to 200 honors courses a semester. So again, there will be variety in terms of those honors courses. One of the other things that we typically get asked when talking about honors courses is, how many honors courses do I have to take? What are my honors course requirements? Do I have to take all honors courses? And so those are some things that students are typically curious about. I will say that honors course requirements vary based on the academic college that a student's major will fall into. So you'll wanna stay tuned for your academic college showcases today that will come after this presentation where you can learn more about the honors college student experience based on that particular academic college that you are interested in. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, I will say that honors course requirements are again going to vary. So some students may only have to take a handful of honors courses while they're here on campus. While some students may have to take anywhere between two to three honors courses a semester, every semester until they graduate. So just keep in mind, it's gonna be different from, for everybody. The honor student experience will definitely be different for a student in the College of Engineering in comparison to a student in our Sam Walton College of Business. If you do wanna take a look at those honors course requirements, 
feel free to visit our website, honorscollege.uark.edu. When you get to that page, you'll scroll down to the bottom and you will find six circles, like what you see here on the screen, one designated for each academic college here on campus. You can click on that circle and from there you will find more about honors course requirements. Another great opportunity that students are able to take advantage of during their time here at the University of Arkansas is studying abroad. And on any given year, usually about 55% of our honor students will go abroad. And a large part of that is due to the idea that we do offer competitive grants that can cover a portion of a student's eligible program cost to go abroad. Students are able to study abroad in any of the inhabitable continents, so everywhere but Antarctica right now, but students have plenty of options. Students are able to go abroad for as short as a couple of weeks during an intercession to as long as a full-on academic school year, and there are opportunities available for students across all academic disciplines, so there's something for each of you that have joined us on this call today. Our grants are during any given year, we usually give out between $700 to $800,000 in funding to help students go abroad. And of course, there will be an application process that goes with that, but students are certainly encouraged to study abroad at some point during their college career. One of the main questions that I typically get asked when talking about studying abroad is where have honor students gone abroad to? So here's a picture of a map that shows where students have gone abroad since 2005, and those places are highlighted in red. The other thing that I'll emphasize about studying abroad is that we do have different types of study abroad programs that we offer. We have over 40 study abroad programs that are led by our U of A faculty members, and we have hundreds of traditional study abroad programs that are ran by other institutions in which we have partnerships with them. So, students will have a variety of options to choose from. If you're interested in knowing more about studying abroad, I would encourage you to visit our study abroad website, which is studyabroad.uark.edu. And there you can learn more about the different opportunities that are available for students to take advantage of. Some additional resources that I'll point out are on our Honors College website. So Honors TV, will allow students to view short clips of honor students' experiences with not only things like studying abroad, but also honors research and different things like that. So feel free to check that out if you wanna learn more about those experiences. We also have a link to our honors passport um, on our website as well. So if you wanna learn more specifically about study abroad trips that we've done through the Honors College. You can learn more about trips that students have taken to places like Peru and even Panama. Another big part of our program is Honors Research. And a typical question I get asked when talking about Honors Research is students wanna know, do I have to actually complete research to graduate with Honors and they want to know when that honors research takes place or when they're going to actually be doing that honors research. So students do have to complete a faculty-led undergraduate research project or creative activity in our academic field of study. And they typically will work on their research project at some point during their senior year. Some students will actually start the process of getting things together for their research during their junior year. When we say faculty-led research, that means that a student will select an honors professor from their academic field of study to serve as their mentor during that time that they are working on their research. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, there will be that support there. I will also emphasize that research looks different across all academic disciplines. So some students may be more on the research project side and some students may be more on the creative activity side. For STEM students, they typically are going to be in a lab doing research. This young lady here in the picture is actually um, Olga Briskina. She's a 2019 Honors College grad. She did her degree in biomedical engineering. In this picture, she's actually in the lab with her mentor, Dr. Morton Jensen, and they were doing research on heart valves. Just a little bit more about Olga today. She's actually in, in a joint PhD program between Emory University and Georgia Tech. 
And um, she also is a nationally competitive award recipient. So she did receive a gold water scholarship that does actually fund a portion of her graduate programming or does actually fund her graduate school education. She does attribute a part of her success for graduate school to just getting to do that research very early on. So for some of you that are thinking of furthering your education after the U of A, doing research can certainly be great preparation for you as you get ready for those next steps. Of course, all students won't do STEM research in our program. Some students may be more on the creative activity side. So an architecture major, um, it'll be very common for them to build some sort of model for their research project and present that. We have had students that are art majors actually create a series of pieces of art and present that for their research project. Music majors that compose their own piece of music for research. Creative writing students who actually put together a series of pieces of creative stories that they have written. Um, so research will again look different for students across all academic disciplines, but you all are certainly encouraged to do research in an area that you are passionate about. We also have grant funding available to support students during the time that they're working on their research. So whether that means that a student needs to purchase materials or supplies to conduct their research, maybe they need to travel internationally or domestically to conduct that research, or maybe they want to present their research at a conference. We do have funding available for students to apply for to do that. Grant funding can also serve as a stipend for students as well. So keep that in mind also. The other thing I'll add about research is that research is going to be great for students no matter what you decide to do after the U of A. So we've talked about that graduate school piece, but for those of you that are thinking about going into the full-time workforce, keep in mind that research will definitely help you in terms of your communication skills as well as your ability to critically think about things. Our Futures Hub helps our honor students navigate the many decisions that they will have to make throughout their college career. And they also help our students take advantage of all the opportunities that are available here at the University of Arkansas. And they'll, use the, they'll do this using something called the GREAT Framework. So whether a student needs help figuring out what type of study abroad trip that they should go on, or maybe a student needs assistance creating a competitive study abroad grant application. Maybe a student needs assistance with figuring out how to find a faculty mentor here on campus. Maybe a student wants to learn more about how to get engaged with different activities on campus or get involved with internships off campus or learn more about the wonderful honors courses that we offer here in our program. Um, again, we have amazing staff members in our Futures Hub that can help students with making those decisions to make to help them have the best possible time here at the University of Arkansas and make the most of their experiences. I'm not sure how many of you have been to campus already, um, but we are located in Gearhart Hall here on campus. So Gearhart Hall is the home to the Honors College. That's currently where I'm located, as well as Dean Kuhn and Dr. Pittman, who are online today. We are the U-shaped graystone building located between Old Main and Bell Engineering here on campus. In 2013, Gearhart Hall had a major restoration project that was done, and our wing was added to Gearhart Hall. So again, that is now the home to the Honors College. Inside of Gearhart Hall, we have wonderful facilities. So we do have two study lounges for our students that they can utilize on a day-to-day -day basis. We have two conference rooms and we have all of the offices of our amazing staff members here in the Honors College. So we're available to students on a day-to-day -day basis to answer any questions for them. But we also love when students stop by and see us and say hello and update us on the wonderful things that they have been doing in their college careers. We have an all freshman, all honors residence hall here on campus called Hot Honors Hall. It houses about a third of our incoming freshman honors students. It is a co-ed residence hall and it's, it's traditional, 
but it does have spa style bathrooms. So again, I'm not sure who's visited campus and who hasn't, but um, that's just a little bit more detail about what Hots Hall looks like. And you can take a virtual tour of that on Honors TV as well if you want to check that out more. The other thing I'll add about Hots Hall is we have a very engaging community of first year students that live there in Hots. So there will be lots of events that will host at Hots Hall, but there'll be an opportunity to get engaged with a lot of other first year Honors students. As I mentioned previously, we do have a lot of events that are held in Hots Hall. We do host a lot of honors events in general, and some of those will also be hosted here in Gerhardt Hall. We have a range of events that we do on a week-to-week -week basis. Some of our events will be academic. Some of our events will be social. We'll have things like Professor and Pizza on the Patio, where students get to learn more about study abroad opportunities, as well as research opportunities. We'll have things like professional development and alumni events. For some of the professional development events, students can attend things like our resume workshop and things like that. We've had house concerts in the past, dinner with the deans where you get to have dinner with our actual deans. Um, Dean Kuhn is one of those people that's included in the dinner. And we've also had fun events like Club H, which are held um, typically, or this event is typically held in our honors lounge. So the picture that you see here on the screen is a picture of our students at Club H. Um, during that time, we just give students the opportunity to take a break from their studies, come and socialize. We have music, we have food for students. So it's just really a great and fun time to get engaged, meet other honor students, come catch up with our honor staff members and different things like that. One of the things that students typically wonder is if they'll be able to get engaged outside of the classroom. And you will absolutely be able to get engaged outside of the classroom while being a part of the honors college. And you are encouraged to continue to build your resume as while you're here on campus. Whether you want to join the student government here on campus or take part in any service organizations or join a fraternity or a sorority, you can certainly do that while being a part of the Honors College. These two young ladies here in the picture are Tori Hogard and Lexi Jacobus. They were 2019 Honors College grads. They graduated with high honors and they were both STEM majors. They were actually two of our top pole vaulters in the state and in the country. And one of them actually went to the Olympics in 2016. They did everything that I'm telling you honor students typically have to do. So they took honors courses, they did honors research, but they were athletes as well. So that means that they were traveling and practicing and competing on a weekly basis, I'm sure. So my point is that you can do whatever it is that you want to do while being a part of the honors college with the good graces of time management. So time management is gonna be key with anything that you do in your college career. Once students get ready to come down to their time wrapping up at the University of Arkansas, we will also celebrate our students that are getting ready to graduate with honors. And so once students complete their honors courses, once they complete their honors research, they will officially be ready to graduate with honors. They will receive a Latin distinction, not only on their diploma, but also their official transcripts. And they will get to take part in our fun event that we host at the end of each semester called the Senior Common Room. And we usually host that here at Gearheart Hall, which again is the home to the Honors College. Students will get to take part in a pinning ceremony they will receive a pin that says Audux Ot Sapiens, which is loosely translated as bold but wise. And those are characteristics that we hope that we will equip our students with as they get ready to go out into the real world. So students will again get to celebrate with us. That's what you are looking at in the picture there. That's a picture of our honor students and staff and faculty members out in our courtyard at Gearheart Hall. Most importantly, we hope that being a part of the Honors College will serve as a lifelong plus on your resumes. So that just about concludes our presentation for today. But before we get off, just wanna cover a few things. 
Um, following this presentation today is going to be the academic college showcases. So you all were sent an email when it is time to go to that presentation, you want to go into your email and click on that link that you were sent. If you wanted to learn more about one more than more than one academic college, excuse me, you will be able to access recordings of each showcase on our YouTube playlist within the next week. So we will make sure to get that information out there. That presentation will start at 1045 today. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then of course, we'll have one other presentation that follows that at the end of the day. If anybody winds up having any tech issues, feel free to reach out to us and let us know. You can email us at honors at uark.edu. So um, I'm going to open the floor for any questions that we may have um, that may have come up in the chat. Um, Dr. Pittman, did we have anything that came up in the chat that needs to be answered or? Uh, just, just one question. And Michelle, I think we only have time for one or two questions. Um, okay. Amy asked, can you apply to multiple honors colleges? I think she might mean honors programs. Um, but Michelle, do you want to answer how you apply? Sure. So um, Amy, you can apply for the honors college at the University of Arkansas as long as you meet the criteria to do so. Um, as an incoming freshman honors student, you're first going to have to apply to the University of Arkansas and be admitted. Um, and then from there, you'll receive an invitation to apply for honors. Um, as long as, again, you meet that criteria and you'll be able to access that invitation via your new student center portal. Um, I will say that some students do decide which major they're going to do honors in. So just kind of keep that in mind. Some students may do honors for both majors, but um, in terms of like honors requirements, especially depending on what majors you're wanting to do it may be a little bit more tricky to complete those requirements. So students may just do honors for one major specifically in which you would then just do honors for that particular academic college as opposed to applying for both. So Noah, is there any, Dr. Pittman, is there anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, no, and we, just so everyone knows, we're gonna go into a lot more detail about the honors college application. I know a lot of you have already applied and been admitted to honors, but we're going to go into a lot more detail during the next step session that takes place after your academic college showcase. So if you have questions about that, we're going to go into information about that, housing, uh, applying, orientation, and also our Dean of Admissions, Dr. Suzanne McRae, will give some tips about how to, how to prepare a really good fellowship or scholarship application. So we'll get all into that during the next step session. But I do think we probably need to dismiss to the college uh, showcases. Um, thank you so much, Michelle, for uh, presenting to the group about sort of a broad overview of the Honors College. Uh, as she mentioned, go back into the email you received. We, you, you should have gotten another one this morning that has the Zoom links for today. Go to the college showcase that you would like to go to. It's gonna be starting at 1045, so you've got about a five minute break. Uh, but make sure to click on your college showcase. If they ask for a passcode, honors hashtag one is the password. Uh, but we'll see you back here after the academic college showcases to go into a lot more details specifically about next steps in the enrollment process. Thank you again, Michelle. And uh, we'll see everyone at later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>